Welcome to First Canada's FTC SIM tutorials. This series is about how to use FTC SIM, a first tech challenge robot simulator created by First Canada. So welcome back if you've been here before and if you haven't, uh, welcome for the first time that you might be using the first tech challenge simulator. Uh, if you aren't aware, you need to go to ftcsim.org and then you will get to this landing page. If you're already on this landing page, you may need to go and log in. So I'm going to log in. You can see I have a login ready to go. You may not. If you don't, you can sign up as an individual. If you're a team leader or a teacher, you can sign up as a teacher. And there's a video in the series that explains what you need to do to add students to your team or in your class, to your classroom, so that they don't have to use any of their own personal information. So uh, take a look at that video if you're not sure how to do that. In any case, here we go. So I'm going to log in. It takes me back to the same screen. And I know I'm logged in because when I look at these, um, these puzzles, FTC movement, FTC sensor, and so forth, that there's no lock down here where my mouse is. If there was a lock there, it means you, you've got to log in. So I'm going to go to FTC movement. And I'm going to choose the first of the 10 puzzles because I'm going to talk today about variables. I want to go through the basics of variables, and I really don't need a lot of code to explain how they work in FTC SIM. So here we go. There's a short video about how to do this, but I'm doing the video now, so it'll probably change. I have a couple other programs in here that I've disabled because I was demonstrating other things, but the one I want to work on is this one here. So I'm going to zoom in on a little bit, and I'm going to drag my screen over so that you can see it. And essentially what this does, <clears throat> is it allows me to run this robot towards this touchpad. And when I sit on this touchpad, it's going to raise the flag. And that's how I know as I run it here at the bottom. So I know that it that it works. So it's done. So I'm going to keep working. Uh, and basically what I want to do <clears throat> is I want to take one of the number areas, something that I have a number on, and I want to change it to a variable instead of using the actual number here when I set the power. To do that, I'm going to create a variable. So here on the left hand side where I have my options for coding, uh, I'm going to create a variable. Now, most of the other videos we make are about specifically about this robot. I'll reset it here. This robot and commands for the robot or blocks for the robot. But variables are used in all programming languages and the concept is the same. <clears throat> and the uh, rules are also the same and there are rules. So I'm going to click on variables. And I'm going to click up here to say create new variable. And since I want to put it in here for the power of the motors, I'm going to call it M power. And except I don't want the capitals there. Oh, got my cap lock on. There we go. So typically one of the rules that we use when we use variables, and you'll see those rules in a second, is that we don't have any spaces. And if we have multiple words there, and I actually have one, but the first one is L letter M, is we start with the capital letter, each of those new words. So that's what I'm going to put in. And <clears throat> I'm going to show you right here some of the information about the rules. So a variable, the term itself means a change. It's changeable. You can change it. It's not permanent. And there are rules that we follow, which are called syntax. And syntax is what we use for rules and grammar, for speaking a language uh, if you were teaching English or you're teaching French to students who didn't know French as their first language or English as their first language, you would teach them some grammar. There are grammar rules, and that's called syntax. Also relates to spelling. And, and when we're coding in blocks, normally we don't have to worry about the syntax. That's the benefit of using blocks. And that's one of the drawbacks when students are first learning to code is if they've got to remember all the spellings and how all the terms go together. But coding in blocks normally doesn't involve that. But when you're using variables, you have to actually type some stuff in yourself. And so that's why we have some of these rules to make it a little bit easier for you. And one of the key rules is that when you're naming these things, um, you got to give them certain names. So no spaces. If there's multiple words, make it make sense so that people don't have to guess what it is. You're not going to name something X and Y and Z. You may name that for something, but not as a general rule. So I want to take, I want to do a couple of things. I've created my variable. So if I go there, you can see it's there. 
And one thing I have to do is I have to set, I have to give it a first value, an initial value. And that's why we put it in the initialization blocks area. So I'm, it's going to be numeric. And in a lot of programming languages, when you create the variable, you have to indicate whether it's going to be a number or it's going to be a word, which is called a string, or it's going to be a number with a decimal, which sometimes is referred to as a float or a double. Or if it's going to be something that's true and false, which is referred to as a Boolean. In this case, with the blocks, we don't have to do that. We're just going to give it a, a first value. And it's going to be a number because these are numbers down here. And this is where we want the variable to go. So we're going to go to math and then we're going to choose the number block. We're going to slot it in here and then we're going to give it a number. <clears throat> I'm just going to give it a 0.5 uh, because that's about the speed I want it to go. And now when I want it to go and change here to 0.5, instead of putting an actual number down there, I can go and get that variable and I can slide it in and I can get it again and I can slide it in. And so when it gets down here and it says, I'm going to make the motor powered up to, it's going to look to see what M power is. And it's going to say, oh, up here you said M power was 0.5 or 50% of the speed. That's what it's going to be. So when I run it, it doesn't look like it's much faster, but it gets there and it raises the flag and so forth. <clears throat> now, I also have a number here, so I could have put it in there. I could have put it in there, um, although this one I want to stop, so we always know it's going to be a zero. In this program, I really didn't need to have a variable. It's not that big a program. Where it comes in really handy is if you have a lot of lines. So let's say I had 100 lines in my program, and I was going to be using set power for the motor left and motor right many times and then I realized partway through testing my program that the number I kept putting in wasn't the correct number it just wouldn't work and I had to change it well if I have it here set as a variable I can simply go to the top of my program go here and I can change it to a different value and then that value will go in wherever it has m power throughout the program throughout the hundred lines of a very long program if I don't do that, then I've got to search and find every instance of this set power and make the change right there. And often you're going to miss something. So it's a big time saver. So again, uh, we'll run it and you can see it's going to work again a little bit slower because I changed it, but it gets to the beginning of the touchpad and raises the flag. Remember, if you're going to use variables, remember the rules. Use what we have here is camel notation. So every second Every second word in there is going to start with a capital. You're not going to have spaces. You're not going to start them with numbers. So if you were going to have a variable for first name, you wouldn't start it with a numeral like one. You would start first F-I-R-S-T, capital N-A-M-E for first name. So keep that in mind. I uh, hope you're enjoying this series. If you do have any questions, please feel free to contact me at pkeenan at firstinspires.org. Look forward to hearing from you.